Hi everybody, my name is Dora Kermay. I'm an author, performance coach, and former professional table tennis player in New York. You are listening to the Game Sat Match podcast. Have you ever wondered how the greats of any industry are always able to perform at a high level, even under pressure? What is their secret? In this episode of Game Sat Match, we will talk about high performance team coaching, specifically how to improve team performance. And we are back here joined again by Dora Cormay. We're so excited to have her. She is a performance coach, coach I should say, from the <laughs> East Coast. <laughs> Welcome back. How are you today? Um, thank you. I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. It's a pleasure to have you here with all your accolades. I'll ask you to just give us a little recap and introduce yourself uh, to some new listeners out there today. And for those that you already know, stay tuned. We're talking about teams today, and she's going to guide us through this and uh, performance, of course. So welcome back. Oh, thank you. So I'm Dora Kermay, and I'm the founder of Dora Kermay Incorporation, which is a New York-based company that offers coaching services. I work with athletes, professionals, teams, and anyone who seeks fulfillment and well-being, their mind, body, and spirit. And my effective training programs are designed to reduce stress, successfully manage internal and life balance, and maximize performance. Beautiful. So you also are a performance coach, also an author. Please uh, shed some light on that as well. I'm uh, an author of Get Your Game Face On book, which is basically covers how to build rituals between points, especially in table tennis. Yeah. Um, And I offer a guide how to build these different steps because it's very important what you do between points, not just during points. And it affects your performance. And this book is about that. And the second book is Get Your Game Face On Like the Pros, which is an extended version of Get Your Game Face On. And it also offers not just the four steps, but you have to do between points, but also lifestyle choices that will help you consistently perform under pressure in the long term as well, because that's also very important. And the last book, My Stories of Mental Toughness on and Off the Table, that's the latest one. I offer 11 of my life stories when I learned hard lessons and how I could still get the results, although the challenges that I went through. And I offer also tips after every chapter that everyone can use. And I highly recommend to everyone. Great. So European table (laughs) tennis champion in teams, Uh, you played for the Hungarian national team for six years, was ranked uh, top 10 in Europe under age 18, was Mm -hmm. uh, ranked top 10 in the US. I got to point these accolades out. They're pretty uh, amazing. (laughs) Also certified team performance coach. She is. We're going to talk about teams today and uh, so much more. So I want to point out that last week we talked about working with professionals. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about teams and high performance team coaching to be specific. So what type of teams are we talking about here that you work with? I work with athletic teams and with organizations as well. And the principles are the same when you work with teams. So these are universal phenomenon and all of the teams have um, the same dynamic principles and, and the high performance principles are the same. So the types of teams you work with really vary. I mean, you can work with, uh, like you mentioned, a corporation, those type of teamwork, because mm-hmm. there's all about leadership when it comes to work and you become a team with your coworker in a sense, right? What would you say the first step in working, um, you know, is when you work with the team, what are the fundamentals that you have to kind of assess or find out about them to begin? So what's really important to assess, there are two dimensions that are very important. The cohesiveness of the team. And basically, that's very important. It's about team cohesion. And the other one is about effectiveness. It's about productivity. So the team performance assessment tool, what is that? Can you give us a little example of that tool that you use uh, in particular to really promote that effectiveness and productivity of your individuals, hence making up the team? But it's, a, it's about productivity and positivity. Got yeah, it. So, um, yeah, so uh, these are the two very important dimensions. And productivity basically measures how effective is the team regarding completing a task. And when it requires seeing kind of different attributes, when the team has to work together to get things done and the positivity factors means that how you can work well together. It's very important to have a positive environment. We can see also affected teams that 
there is the result, but it's not that positive, that in that case, burnout can happen. So regarding the productivity, there are seven different factors that are very important. And also regarding positivity, there are also seven important factors. Well, why don't we at least read them off? Do you mind? Is that okay? okay? Yes, 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 absolutely. Regarding productivity, it's really important. The team leadership, how is a team leadership regarding roles and decisions? And it it has to be clear. It's also a very important factor, the accountability factor. People do what's their job and also they they do what they say to do. And alignment is also important, which means that even when things are not going right or even there is a conflict, the team can still pull out the result together. There are goals and and strategies that's also very important. Decision making as well. Uh The resources as well. So it means that many times there are uh, resources and can the team effectively use those resources because many times people are not using those resources. And the proactiveness is also very important. That was the seventh factor. And regarding positivity, communication, it's included, right? Communication is very important. Trust, respect, the values, the diversity, camaraderie, constructive interaction, and optimism as well. Beautiful. So you also mentioned that it only takes 20 minutes to complete this questionnaire that you'd like the team leader to do. And it's very easy, accessible, it's online, it's on your website. So it's something Mm -hmm. they could do, right? Then you have a brief conversation, go over the results. And then what happens next? Yeah. So what's happened next after we go over, after they completed a 20 minutes questionnaire, we will go over the results. I also show visually a a chart uh, where the team is in on these dimensions, which are, they are scoring low, which they are scoring high. And also what would be the best to work on when we are talking about these dimensions, the high performance teams are high on the productivity and also on the positivity dimensions. So that's a very good scenario. Whenever, whichever dimension is low, that's where the work has to be done. So basically we have a conversation about that and I give a feedback. And also after that, there is an ongoing coaching, which is minimum two hours per month. And we are working on these goals based on the assessment. Got it. It's minimum two hours per month, but of course it's the best, the more frequent it's better. And it can be also a half day or a full day per month. It also depends on the schedule and also on the assessment. So if the team can, we can also work weekly for like an hour. So it's again, based on the size, of the company and and those based on the schedule as well and the goals. Got it. Good to hear. And then also, um, you know, for example, some tips to improve your team's performance. Do you want to share a little bit about that? It's very important to write down your shared purpose. Great teams understand why they exist. We know that even great teams have personality conflicts and You don't have to always be the best friends with your team, but you can still be good teammates. The the key is to figure out how to get everyone on the same page about goals, responsibilities, and ultimately the reason for the team existence. So uh, my number one tip would be, it's very important just to remind and get everyone on the same page. Why do we exist? Write down what the team comes up with and keep it simple, clear, The other one is also important that create one goal with shared accountability. Mm -hmm. Effective teams have at least one goal that is shared by everyone. In fact, it's best to have only one. So individual team members should be accountable for their goals that contribute to the whole. But it's essential that there is one goal that the team collectively owns, where success is truly shared. Everyone in the team should be responsible to do their tasks that they they have been assigned for. So that's also a very good tip. The other one is create safety required for trust because how you behave and what behavior you tolerate from others on the team will set the tone whether it's safe to trust each other on the team or not. So it's, it's good when you can be honest with your feelings and be courageous enough to be vulnerable with your team. 
and also takes strength and courage to be human with your team of course in a professional way um but that's also very important so it's also if like team members uh, can communicate their feeling when things don't feel right or fair in the organization and and share their opinion in, a, in an appropriate way also I would, it's also very important that my fourth step is agree on how you will interact, have a dialogue about what the team needs for each other from a relationship perspective. So discuss whatever comes up ranging for, for uh, we are on time to meetings and also we never complain about each other to others, right? That's a very common one. So it's important. It's good to have these terms and be on the same page and it makes a big difference. And the last one is also really important to encourage healthy conflicts. Conflict is natural and expected in any high-performing team. And without conflict, you have groupthink and a narrow range of responsibilities for the team to achieve. So embrace conflict, of course, in a professional way. Uh, constructive conflict is healthy and it's okay to disagree. And it also can be very beneficial. Yeah, I don't, you know, a lot of time people talk within, within, and that starts dividing the team and bringing the team down. Doesn't that happen a lot? Unfortunately, it, it's a, it's a shame. And all the businesses I've worked in, all the people I've worked in with, there's always that one who wants to talk about someone else and then puts them down and then you feel obligated to talk about them and you don't want to, but then you feel, and it becomes this inner circle of mistrust. Um, you know, now you're not a team anymore. You've become divided. So just <laughs> a question of someone comes to you and says something about maybe someone else how would you handle that so you know that you mean business like we don't want to talk about that but you have to say it in a respectful way so you're not now an outcast from that person what would you say if someone's bad talking someone in the team or you know at the job um i would say it's also if you have any problem it's good to express it to the person Mm -hmm. so because we can solve this problem and and um i would definitely say that it's good to express those feelings to the person who you are talking about because he's or she's not here and also have meetings when people can um, express their opinion about things to change right that that is not good but I would say the most important part is to when things are not going in a way that don't make it personal it make it create norms yeah creating norms are, are very important and we know it always happens mm-hmm. right so there and, are and also it's, I would say it's some people like to talk more about others than other people so but it's important to express yeah. what the norm is and if you it's the same if you if you let people to do that you create a culture that where everyone is talking about everyone so that's not so healthy And on the website, you offer the secret of high performance teams. It's a five page document that gives you some insight. I urge people to take a look at that on your website, D-O-R-A-K-U-R-I-M-A.com. You say, is your team high performance or is it dysfunctional? So definitely a good thing to look over some great notes uh, that you have there as well. Uh, Next up, let's move on to the next section. And I believe we're talking um, in regards to is it um, purpose? Was it acknowledging people? Acknowledgement, right? Yes. yes Four simple ways of increasing. Yes. <laughs> you're uh, increasing the, um, your outlook, your optimism on something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how I said optimism is a very important factor of the team that you want to create positive energies, right? If we also talked about like uh, individually last time, but creating positive uh, energy is related to optimism. So it's uh, how you can increase optimism in, in, in your team is one of the steps you can do is acknowledge people. Acknowledgement is always very important. So when you recognize someone's character or qualities and acknowledgement include what we notice about their stand, their growth, their learning or what we see, it's very important to acknowledge when somebody is doing something well or or somebody stepped out from their comfort zone. So it's very important to give compliments. And I also want to highlight it here that it's there are different kinds of compliments like good job, you're amazing, which includes 
evaluation. So it's important to give compliments that it's acknowledging specifically what they did well. So it's not that generic. Got it. And also uh, you say acknowledge people, number one. What about using humor, positive body language (laughs) as well? But the humor can work to our advantage in some ways, right? It kind of puts you all connected, makes you laugh, makes you feel good. Yeah, so humor is so important. And I think we all know that that humor contributes to creating a positive environment. It has so many benefits. And actually humor at the workplace, um, there was some research about it. There is, uh, if there is more humor at the workplace, there is less burnout, higher probability of learning, more mm-hmm. collaboration, faster recovery from stressful situations. And also it increases in uh, the, the work effectiveness. So it's, it's really, it's, it's the tension and provides positive emotions that we also talked about last time. So regarding teams and in general, I really like humor because it's great positive emotions and, and uh, also help you to deal with stress. And positive language is also important, right? It's not just the way you say it. Um, you know, there's a lot to it. It's how you say it. There's different um, the intention behind the message and about also your body language. Could you talk about that? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so body language is a non-verbal communication. For example, it's important how is your eye contact, facial expression, posture, arms, legs, and distance. You want to create confident, positive body language because it also affects the positivity and the energy in the team. And confident, positive language means that your shoulders back, you maintain solid eye contact with smiling with a smiling face, and you make purposeful and deliberate gestures with your hands and arms. And it's important to think about your body language and the impressions you are portraying as well, because it's interpreting and understanding the body language of others. Got it. (laughs) And uh, let's talk a little about your performance coaching and sense what it is and what it's in store for groups. How does it work? Um, you know, how many people at a time? Could you talk more about the process? So how I said, I do an assessment, which is available for whoever would like to have a, a team assessment. It takes 20 minutes and I give a summary afterwards. And when I work with groups, I also create a six or a 10 week performance coaching programs. And uh, regarding groups, I meet with the group uh, once a week and I focus on goal setting, motivation, self-talk, visualization, reflection. I mean, it's really based on the assessment, again, who is in the group, but we cover different uh, topics weekly that can be very beneficial for everyone and it's helping to increase their performance in general. Got it. And we still have uh, five minutes left in the show and there's a lot more work. I know we don't have that much time, but what other things uh, do you want to share about this? I would like to share that if you have a team and you would like to improve the team performance, I highly recommend you to do an assessment. And also if you want to improve the team performance or you have a specific topic that you really would like to work on I'm also available so my message is that if you want to increase your team performance take some action steps regarding to reach out to work on those skills we talked about mainly about how I work with uh, professional teams but um, I also work with sport teams as well. It's a little bit different how I work with sport teams regarding the assessment because this assessment tools was for organizations and sport teams is a little bit different regarding and the assessment. Got it. And could you share some insight? And maybe not a lot of mention specific clients you work with, but when you're talking teams and business, we're talking some big corporations you've worked with. I know some maybe you could mention, some not. Mm-hmm. And you work with big and little as well. I work with big and little as well. I also offer keynote speaking engagements. So I offer stress management keynote speaking engagement for the whole organization. And I also did assessment and we started working on the process. 
I would say, mid-sized companies. I have many different tools that I offer and I always worked on, work on what based on the, the assessment and the, and the needs of the organization. So it can be one time keynote speaking engagement. It can be an ongoing performance coaching or it can be a specific subject that they want to have more education on. Well, thank you so much for being here. And in regards to um, anything upcoming, right? We're here in spring, here's the summer. Is this a busy season for you and your work? Um, you know, anything in particular about your coaching as a performance coach? I mean, do things get busier at this time of year where everyone's kind of in a more positive mind frame, state of mind? It's like spring is here, summer's here. We're feeling a little more, except today in New York, it's a little rainy, um, you know, a little more upbeat mm-hmm. and want wanting the best. Or does it happen at the first quarter of the year normally? Yes. Yeah, so the first quarter of the year is usually about goal setting, right? You are setting up your goals and you want to reach those goals. So this this time is is it can be really productive before summer because summer is a little bit slower. So I highly recommend everyone to take on action steps and start working on, on your goals and have the necessary tools and reach me out if you need any help with that. Perfect. And how can we reach you on? My website is www.dorakurimay.com and my email address is dora at dorakurimay.com. Perfect. (laughs) Thank you so much. If you want to give you a call, do you want to give a phone number as well? Yes. And my phone number is 347-849-1563. Great. Thank you again, Dora. We appreciate your time here. Thank you for being here and looking forward to the next time we speak. Have a great week. And uh, to all of our listeners, you're welcome. We appreciate you as well. I hope you got a lot of value from this episode. Thank you for listening. I have included a link in the description below where you can get a free copy of my high performance eBooks to help you to take your performance to the next level. Until next time, take care.